Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to display alerts inside your app in Swift on Xcode 11 for iOS development. I will show both a simple alert as well as one with a text field. I will add timestamps and pin comment below in case you need to skip to one specific part. So without further ado, let's get started. I am just going to open here uh, Xcode and I'm going to create a new project. So I'll just do this a single view app here and I'll just call this something maybe generic like um, alerts and I'll just save this to my desktop here and I will make this full screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my main dot storyboard and I'm going to add a button onto my storyboard and this button is going to act as my trigger for my alert. Uh, you can make your trigger for your alert anything you want. However, just for the sake of this tutorial, I will attach it to a button. So the button, I'm just going to change this to perhaps something like show alert. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go under here, this button uh, with the lines and click on assistant. And this will open up the assistant editor where I can connect this button to my code. So to do that, you can either control click and drag or right click and drag from the button right here. You can see the arm and I'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to insert an outlet. Outlet allows me to connect something on my storyboard to my code. So I'm going to just make my name for this button show alert button. Show alert button there. And I'm just going to close out the assistant editor and go straight to the actual page of code so that I can um, edit it in a slightly bigger view. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go outside of my view did load just into, um, into this class but outside of the view did load here and I'm going to create a function. And this function is going to show my alert. The first alert I'm going to be doing is a basic alert. So I'm going to type in func, which is the keyword to create a function, and then the name of the function. In this case, I'll just set the name of the function to show alert. And I will have no parameters here, so I'm an empty pair of parentheses, and then open and closed brackets here. So now inside of this function, I want to create and show an alert. And in order to create an alert, you need to create a UI alert controller. A UI alert controller controls the alert and it is the main object for the alert that we're going to show. So to do this, we can create a constant. So I'll say let alert view and this is going to be the view for my alert. I'm going to set this equal to a UI alert controller just like that. And then if you do open parentheses to um, kind of find it's in it here, I'm just going to choose the last item here with a parameter for title, a message, and then a preferred style. So for my title, that's going to be if you um, visualize an alert that you may have gotten on another app that you have, the thing in bold at the top, that's going to be your title. So in this case, I'll just set this to alert title. Of course, the title and the message are a string. The next thing is the message, and the message is the body of the alert or the or the uh, text that shows underneath the title. Generally, the title is more concise and then the message goes into slightly more detail. So in this case, I'm just going to set this to, this is the alert message, something like that. That will act as my message. Of course, you would not write this. You'd actually uh, write a message and a title that is more meaningful toward your app, but this is just for demo purposes. And then for my per preferred style, if you click on the dot, you will see two options that are a UI alert controller dot style. You have action sheet and you have alert. Because I'm creating an alert, I'm going to use the alert style. So this creates my UI alert controller. Now, if I were to show or present this alert view, you would see that there would be a title and a message. However, there would be no buttons, usually on a Alert, you'd have either a cancel button, a confirm button, a done button, more info button, some sort of button on there that allows you to do something additional. So in this case, because we don't have any of that, we probably need to add it. So to do that, you can do alert view and then dot add action. 
and this allows you to add a new action or button to your alert. So if you click here, add action, the parameter that it wants is actually a UI alert action. And we need to create a UI alert action to put into the add action so that we can actually add something. So I'm going to type in UI alert action and you and use a open parentheses. And then I will use this right here, which gives me a title, another style and a handler. So basically the title is going to be what appears on the button. And so the first one I'm actually going to do is cancel. Also, when you add an action, the actions show up left to right. So if you want your left button to be something, it would probably be the first add action that you use. So I'm going to use the cancel one first. Now the style, if you click dot, there are three styles. There is the cancel style, the default style, and the destructive. Uh, cancel is going to be something that obviously cancels. Uh, default is the default and then destructive is going to be used when you are, as you can see here, um, change or delete data. So think about it if you have some sort of app and you have a button that says delete user data and there's an alert that pops up that says, are you sure you want to delete user data? Generally that button that says yes is going to be red and that is the destructive style. Because this is a cancel button, I will just use the cancel style and then the handler refers to the action that you want to happen when you click the button. In this case, because I have a, this is a cancel button, my action is going to be nothing. It's just going to close the alert. If you have your handler as nil, it just closes the alert. Now I want to add another action because, you know, cancel is only one thing. I want it to actually do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, another alert view dot add action, add action. And I will also put another UI alert action into this and use the same title style and handler. This time I want my title to be done and my style can just be a default style. But now in handler, I'm actually going to do something because unlike cancel, I actually want to do something here. So to do this, you double click and you see you have this UI alert action in and then you have code. In this case, you would usually put an alert here as this is your action. You technically probably could just put an underscore here because you're never going to use this um, use this variable that's created. So I'll just leave that as an underscore, basically meaning that you know there is nothing that I'm going to use this for. So it's just blank. Underscore is blank. And then here in the code, I can actually perform an action. So when I want this button to be pressed, I want it to print to the log that. Um, the done button was pressed. So I can just say print done button was pressed, just like that. And that's inside of this right here, which is for the action. So now I've added all the actions that I want to my alert view. Now I just want to present my alert view um, and show it on the screen. So the next part is going to be pre uh, present uh, alert view. So first it was creating the alert view. Now it's going to be presenting the alert view. So I'm going to present my alert view by simply doing self and self accesses the view controller that this currently is self dot present. And uh, this function allows you to present a view controller and then you have an animated and a completion handler. Here I'm going to be presenting my alert view. That is the view controller I am presenting. And animated is going to be true because why not? I like to have an anime, slight animation when it pops up. And then the completion handler refers to what you want to happen after the action is done. In this case, there's nothing that I want to happen, so I will do nil. Uh, if I did not do, if I did not write nil here, it'd be something very similar to the handler here, except you wouldn't have this part. You would just be a just a curly brace there. So I'm just going to leave this as nil because I don't want anything to happen after my alert is presented. Now I'm going to hook up this um, function to actually run when my button is pressed. So this is very simple. I'm just going to go to my show alert button dot add target. Um, my target for this is self because that's what's doing the action. Um, and then the action itself is going to be a selector. So actually the function 
here I need to add at objc in order for it to work with a button. If you're not using a button to show your alert, you don't need to worry about that. This is just when you are trying to tie it to a button. So then here under your action, you can do um, pound symbol or hashtag selector. And then in here, you put the name of the objc method. In this case, this is show alert right here. Again, you will notice that there are no parentheses, as I said in my last video, simply because when you are using the add objc function, you're using inside of a button, there are no parameters that you need. So there will not be another set of parentheses. And then here four is the event when this action is actually going to be run. And this is going to be run with the touch up inside event, which basically refers to that when a user clicks on a button, when their finger lets go of that button, so it, when it first lowers onto the screen and then it releases, then it's going to run right here. So now I can test this by running this on the iPhone 11 simulator and see if it worked properly and successfully. So I'm just going to wait for my iPhone 11 simulator to turn on and hopefully show my button anytime soon as it loads. There it is. And if I click this, you will see that it presents an alert. It presents the bold alert title here, and then it presents the message. This is the alert message right here. And I have two buttons. I have the cancel and done. If I click cancel, nothing happens. However, if I click done, you will see that it prints to my log done button was pressed just as I told it to do right here. So that is how to show an alert. Now I want to show a text view alert. So an alert with a text view inside of it. It's actually pretty cool. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new function and I will just add the at objc because I will be adding it to my button. But remember, you don't need that if you're not going to be tying your function to your button. So this here, func, and then I'll just do, instead of maybe show alert, show text view alert right here. And again, I don't need any parameters. So now inside of this, I'm going to have a comment that says creating text view alert view. And I'm going to do something very similar as up here with the UI alert controller. I'm going to create a UI alert controller again. So I'm going to use let to create a constant text alert view equals a UI alert controller. And I'm going to use the same title message and style as I did up here. I could just set my title, I guess, to um, alert title and then my message to this is the alert message to something like that because it's my second one. And then my preferred style, I'm again going to do dot alert because it's going to be an alert. And um, I can actually add an action here. So alert view dot add action, add action. And this will be a UI alert action and I will have a title, a style and a handler. So um, actually before I add this action, I actually want to add my text view. So to do that, I'm going to do text alert view dot add text field right here. And all this does is it adds a text field. And then I have a configuration handler. You can set that to nil. You do not necessarily need that. And that is all the code you need to add a text field. And the reason why I wanted to do this first is because my action will be tied to this text field. So for my action, I will just name this submit. My style can be dot default and my handler, I actually want something to happen. So I'm going to open my handler and I do not need the variable here. Just so just like over here, I'm going to do an underscore and then in. So then right here, what I actually want to do is I want to print what the user typed in. So basically, if you wanted to access what the user actually typed in their text field, this is how to do it. So I'm going to print the value, but basically what you do is you do text alert view dot text fields and text fields, as you can see, text fields is an array of text fields. And there's a question mark here because it's unsure if it actually exists, because what if you did not add a text field, then there would be no array. 
So it'll be text fields. And then because I know for sure I added a text field, as I did in line 45, I can use an exclamation point to unwrap it. And this would be safe because I added a text field. So there's definitely no reason why there would not be a text field. And then here, because this is an array, I have to choose the item I want. So I'll choose the first item. And in Swift, uh, to choose the first item, you use a bracket zero. Zero is always the first index item of an array in Swift. And then from here, I now have my text field, my singular text field. But the last thing I need to do is do dot text. And dot text here will actually take the text out of the text field, just like so. And so now I have created a text field. I've added an action. And now the last thing I need to do is I need to present uh, present alert view. And so to do that, I'm just going to do, again, self.present, present, which is a function here. And then the view controller to present is the text uh, alert view. Animated will be true. And completion will be nil, just like before. And the last thing I'm going to do before I run this is this button right here. Instead of doing the show alert, running the show alert function, I'm going to make it run the show text view alert but, uh, function. That way you can see the result of that. So I'm going to set that as my selector and I'm going to run my app a second time. And when I click this button, you see that, in, that a text field has appeared right here very nice now one thing which uh, you actually may want to do is add a placeholder so to add a placeholder you just want to use text alert view uh, dot text fields zero and then dot placeholder and uh, you can actually set this equal to my placeholder just like that and so now i'm going to run it just so that uh, you can see how it is with a placeholder so you can see that now it says my placeholder as a placeholder. So uh, that, that's just helpful so that you can actually tell the user what you want to type in. And so let's say I type in uh, just a sample string like the quick brown fox um, jumps over the lazy dog. I think that's how it is. And if I click submit, you will see that it prints to my log. So this is how to access the text from the text field in your alert. All right, that is how to add alerts into your app. All of the code in this video will be on my GitHub page in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.